Hey, this is Tom at Talent Guitar Works. I'm a repair facility and OEM builder in Southwest Florida. And today I want to talk to you about why the big guitar companies, with some exceptions, are having a hard time. If you knew that your doctor's office was run by an accountant, would you still go there? How about your dentist? Chiropractor? How many luthiers are actually still in the industry of building guitars? other than Paul Reed Smith and Kiesel and <clears throat> Sire and a few other brands out there, Texas Toast Guitars, which is an up and coming brand that does a real good quality product. Who's out there? Now, Gibson made this big to do about the last CEO they hired. He could play guitar. Well, that's great. Can he tell you why the guitar he's playing sounds good? Can he tell you why the wood that was put into that guitar and why the pickup lines were the way they were so it would sound that guitar to be acceptable and sought after by the public? Probably not. He knows what he likes, but I know what I like. Now I do also know this, as a repair facility, there are some guitar brands I never see. And I'm going to name a few of them. One, Paul Reed Smith. I've seen two SEs in the last three years, and those were for fretware, for guys that had grips like Gorillas, and they needed fret level and dresses. So I, I really shouldn't count those regular maintenance for somebody who's hard on a guitar. Rickenbacker, unless it's a restoration, I never see a Rickenbacker. I have never seen a Kiesel or a Carvin come in for a repair. that should tell you something. I see Gibsons, I see Martins, I see Martins come in all the time. Martins come in for nuts, they come in for saddles, and they come in to get uh, the EQ replaced because the, the system they're using that needs to be tuned to the guitar by a uh, service center is just too much of a hassle. I work with a lot of musicians that out, are out playing. They need that guitar to make money. Uh, we've got probably a thousand beach bars these guys play at from Fort Myers all the way up to Clearwater. Uh, they can't take six months off waiting for their guitar to come back to them. Even if they have two, that leaves them no backup, no safety net. Um, the nearest uh, Martin guitar repair facility is in Orlando, which Martin says is okay. That's a five-hour drive one way. Guys aren't going to do it. They opt to void the warranty and replace the EQ. Taylors, uh, before pre-CNC Taylors, never saw any. Post-CNC Taylors, starting to see some. So that may be the human factor that's taken out of that guitar manufacturer. I'm not sure. Um, I have seen 914 CEs with the bridge ripped completely off of it that was two years old. I don't know who's gluing those bridges on. But what you have to do is look for the guitars that somebody who actually knows what they're doing is building that instrument. They can answer every question about it. You hand Paul Reed Smith his guitar back and say, why did you do this? And he's going to tell you. Now, one of the things I noticed about Paul's guitars, which are great, I own one. I've played probably about eight of them. Seven of the eight I didn't like. I didn't like the way they were voiced. I didn't like the neck design. I found one that I liked and I won't part with it. So this brings us to the other side. And I have people bring guitars in and they buy artist signature guitars that think they are going to buy this and they are gonna sound like the artist. Nope, you're gonna sound like you still. And to buy an artist's signature guitar, the artist voiced that guitar for his professional work on stage and the way he does it, what modifications he made to the original to make that guitar his and get out there and play it. So buying an artist model guitar or artist signature guitar isn't going to help you that much. Understanding why they put the things on they did to get the sound they did, that'll help you. That'll help you a lot. But I could take any guitar out there and change the pickups on it and change the wiring circuit 
and make it sound a lot different. What you want to get is a guitar that you like the way the neck feels, you like that fretboard scale, you like the frets that are on it, you like the bridge, you like the way it feels and the way you can hold it without it neck diving. That's the guitar to get, then find the pickups that are appealing to you, that are voiced for you. I work with Ken Armstrong USA hand-wound pickups continuously. I just got a customer and I say, you talk to Kent, here's his phone number, give him a call. Kent's going to figure out what pickups you like. Out of all the Kent Armstrong pickups I've put in, I've never had any come back to me and somebody say, these aren't what I wanted. So, be a wise consumer, stop buying import guitars, and stop buying a guitar that you're going to hope is going to be done better because an accountant's running the company. Hopefully Gibson and Fender and some of the other companies are going to wise up and say, you know, maybe we should hire a luthier as the CEO and get him down on the floor. Or maybe we should take the CEO and send him down on the floor to build guitars for about two months before he takes the reins. Have an understanding. Paul Reed Smith has a great trick. His wood buyers go out, they'll buy a tree. Every piece of that tree they don't use, they sell to other guitar manufacturers got to be something there. So this is Tom at Talon Guitar Works. Hope you like the channel, subscribe to it. We'll be coming out with more videos soon. Bye.